Jesus Christ. Amen. May we find that we're broken hearted. Bring us joy, peace. In Jesus' name. And everyone here will see a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, I'm happy I'm happy to join you here this afternoon. Um, actually, um, Pastor Paul is a great man of God that I respect so much. Can we clap our hands Thank for God and the Pastor Paul? <coughs> I met Pastor Paul in um, last two years in, in February, last two years, when we went to Israel. And I since then, I've never forgotten about him. Since then, my rich heart, he has a sweet spirit. One thing I've um, known about him and identified that he has that spirit to identify good things in people. And there are people who don't see the good in people. Um, but Pastor Paul is able to see even the good in the dead. Hallelujah. So I pray that God will let you increase more and more and you will live more and more and impact Amen. more life in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are actually doing a great thing and Amen. Oh, he didn't say amen at all. Amen, amen. God bless you. Okay, quickly, let's go to um, our book, um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Can I read, please? Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. It says, And having disarmed, the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. And I would like to read from a tract in all the versions. Okay, the NIV. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. Now, the King James. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Um, now, what I would like us to talk about, the title of my message is Victory Even in Defeat. Can you look at somebody and say, victory even in defeat? Victory, victory even in defeat, yes. Victory <coughs> even in defeat. This is really, really interesting subject here. How can we have victory even in defeat? Because there is defeat in actuality. There is a defeat. And how can I have a victory? And how can you tell me there is a victory even in this defeat? Now, this story is about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Bible says that when he came to this world, he came to die for us. But do not forget that in the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says that curse is the one who is hung on the cross. Even in Galatians, he said the curse is the one who is hung on the tree. Which means for you to die or be hung on a tree is a curse. So in the culture of the Jews, anyone who is killed on the cross, the person is seen or viewed as a curse. So most of the time, the crucified people, criminals, anyone who is hung on the cross is either a criminal, a terrorist, or anyone who is creating a mess in the country. They crucify you in order to send a warning across to the other citizens that when you do this, this is what is going to happen to you. So in actuality, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was not just a death, but they were actually trying to humiliate him in front of his followers. Mm -hmm. They were trying to embarrass him in front of the nation and to send a strong warning to people that if you go through this path, if you walk through this path, this is God who says he's, he's, the, he's the child of God and his father is a man up there who is God and now he has been brought to this point of embarrassment to this low point of his life he was brought to this point by dying naked on the cross so it was a clear cut it was a clear indication it was a clear message that 
now the man who calls himself the son of the living God, we are opposing him and it is not true. And if it is true, why don't his father, why doesn't his father for we find ourselves in a situation and we wish God will come very soon to rescue us. But God does not come and rescue us. I don't know if you find yourself in that situation whereby there is so much bills around, whereby there is a sickness in your life and you wish God will heal you. You come to church, you pray, you do all kinds of things and you ask yourself, if God is there, why am I going through these challenges? You remember when Herod caught Jesus. He said, are you the son of God? We you are the son of God, tell me and I will set you free. Jesus Christ said to him, my kingdom is not here. If I want to be set free, they will have set me free long time ago. I chose to be in your hands. You didn't arrest me. I allowed myself to be here. Sometimes it is not the devil who has brought certain situation in our life. It is God himself who has taken us to that situation because out of that situation, God is going to create a miracle out of it. Oh, no, amen. 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 That is somebody relating to this thing that I'm talking about. <laughs> now, Paul was the one who wrote this scripture. He was writing this scripture to the people of Colossa because there was a church there and then people were coming to the church and all kinds of people were coming to the church with different kinds of philosophy and different kinds of doctrines which were not true. And so Paul has to write to them and straighten up things and say, this is not how it is. Now, there sometimes people think when you are following Christ, you did not to go through anything you don't need to go through challenges you don't need to go through setbacks you don't need to go through and um, um, all kinds of things so anytime there is a negative thing they try to associate it to the devil do you remember the man who was blind the bible says that the disciple asked jesus christ why is this man blind and the lord said to the man the lord said to the disciple jesus said to the disciple it is not about sin do not associate everything to sin sometimes it is not the devil who brought this it is God himself who brought it in order for us to receive a miracle. If I didn't foresee for God to heal me, I wouldn't have healed. The reason why you are in your situation, because God wants to reveal the other side of him to you. To prove to you that he's able to set you free. Amen. <coughs> So now, this is the man who was hung on the cross. And when he was hung on the cross, his disciples were nowhere to be found. It was only few people who saw him because it was so embarrassing. Your master, somebody you respect so much, somebody you love so much, here is the person being hung on the cross and he's so naked on the cross. It was so embarrassing, painful. The man you follow, the man you worship, the man you revere so much and all of a sudden, People throwing stones at him, people spitting on his face, people looking at him, making mock and they ask you, is it not your man you were following? Look at him, he's making fun of your Messiah. And yet still, he was still on the cross. He could have chosen to vanish on the cross and he had the power to vanish from the cross, but he chose to be in that situation. Dear brothers and sisters, I came to tell you, whenever you are in a situation, don't be in a hurry to run out of the situation because sometimes God is using your test to bring a testimony. Yes, He's amen. using that mess to bring you a message. Amen. So if you don't stay in that test, you will not get the message. If you don't stay in that test, you will not get the testimony He's going to give you. When I was a child, now I have a great testimony because when I was a child, um, I was full of sickness and even what it got to a point, my mother thought I was going to die. And early at dawn, I could hear my mother praying beside the bed and she was praying that God would speak my life because everyone thought I was going to die. All my friends were happily playing around whilst I wasn't able to play. I wasn't so much playing with my friends because I had an health issue. My health was failing and that was it. At that point, it was through the sickness, my mother learned how to pray because she had to pray. If she doesn't pray, she's going to lose her child. Now, she became more prayerful as a result of my situation. So, the devil thought, bringing my situation was actually going to break my mother, but in actuality, it increased her faith. Anything that will not kill you will make you a better person. I usually mean somebody, you are a better person because of what you went through. Thank God for the challenges 
you are going through because out of those challenges you have become a better person may god bless the church today amen, amen. so the bible says that jesus was hung on the cross on the curse he was so much cursed and he was on the cross and there was nobody to set him free but remember when you read the scripture the bible says that when he was hung on the cross whilst they were looking at the physical embarrassment the bible says that remember in the bible he says that when jesus was killed he went to the spirit world and set people free if the devil knew that killing jesus was going to set us free he wouldn't have dared he would have let him go alone but because he didn't know that jesus had the master plan that you crucify me on the cross and dying i will step into the evil world and i'll bring those who are dead back to life so the bible said when jesus died all those that were dead came back to life i pray in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god whatsoever thing my dear brothers and sisters you are going through is bringing the best out of you now uh, your amen is let go it's amen. bringing the best out of you amen. whatever you are going through the lord is bringing the best out of you amen. it's bringing great things out of you it's bringing nice things out of you some of us have become more prayerful because because of the challenges we are going through now if there was no challenge we wouldn't have been prayerful now but because of the challenge we have been prayerful there is a victory in this defeat that we see oh, there man. is a champion coming out of you there is a david coming out of you in the name of jesus christ oh, if you read the bible carefully david was in the bush and he was tending his father's flocks and then bible says that a lion came to take one of the lamb he ran after the lion and pulled back the lamb from him and when it was time in the years later it was time for somebody to kill or to face goliath nobody was there but this same david because he has done it before in the bush he was able to do it in the battle because sometimes what you are going through is just a training god is bringing you to the bigger stage where bad people look at you and you will say where has she been where have you been all this while and you will say when you were not there in the bush the lord was training me in my in the bad marriage the lord was training me how to be humble in my sickness the lord was training me how to pray more in my loneliness the lord was training, was teaching me how to rely on him in the name of jesus Jesus. sometimes the lord is going to take certain people from our life in order to learn how to trust in him in the wilderness the lord took the people of israel from everybody and took them to the wilderness and it was in the wilderness that the people of israel learned how to have faith in god because there was no food there when they needed food they lifted their eyes to god and god rained down food for them when they needed water they Pray to God and God brought water out of a walk. God sometimes have to bring people, take people from your life in order for you to trust him. Hmm. Because isolation brings revelation. Hmm. When God brings you into a place of isolation, he is actually trying to reveal himself to you. Amen. When folks leave you, when your loved ones leave you, when people say, I'll be with you every day and everywhere when they leave you, it is that time that God is trying to get your attention. It is that time that God is trying to get you. He needs you at that time, at that particular time. Because there are people around us, we put our trust in so many people, we put our trust in our husband, our wives and our friends, our best. All those people are distractions. So now God says, I need to tell you something. So isolation will always reveal God to you. Mm. When no one is around, when people turn their back on you, it is not the time for you to kill yourself. Mm. When people turn their back on you, it is not the time to accuse God and accuse them. Just wait. Mm. Your Messiah is coming. Amen. Your victory is on the way coming. Amen. Your Messiah is on the way coming. He will prove them wrong for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Bible said when he was hung on the cross, he set people free. He made a public spectacle of the enemy's defeat. It made me understand that blessing is not always physical. Blessings are also spiritual. My blessing is not determined by what I drive or where I stay. 
The Bible says that the disciple of Jesus Christ, where do you live? He said, the son of man has no place to lay, to lay his head. You may not have a place to lay your head, but still, God is with you. Yes. You may not have a place, you may not have a job, but still, the Lord is with you. Amen. God is not a circumstances God. God is a God who is all weather. He doesn't care whether we have a job, whether you have money in your pocket. I remember that Paul in the beautiful gate, uh, Peter in the, at the beautiful gate, when the blind man, when the cripple asked him for money, he said that I don't have any money. But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He may not have physical money, but he has spiritual money that can change the life of the man. If he gave the man money, the man will still be sitting there. But he gave him an anointing, a blessing, a miracle that changed the destiny of the man, that the man walked out of his situation and his double soul. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God will give you that spiritual power, Amen. that spiritual anointing. Amen. We may not have what we want. We may not have the house we want. We may not have the car we want. We will not have the property we want. But we still have Jesus. Amen. And when you have Jesus, you have everything. Amen. And they cannot fight you. Say, I have Jesus. I have a Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So on, on the cross, he was setting people free whilst he was on the cross. Why do you think that it was a curse? It wasn't a curse. It was victory. Anything that does not take you from God but bring you close to God is a miracle. Mm. Anything that does not take you from the love of God but brings you close to the love of God is a victory. If I have to lose my job in order for me to get close to God, it's my victory. If I have to lose my hand, my hand, Bible says that it's better to enter into heaven with one arm than both arms and go to hell with both arms. If I have to lose my arm and go to heaven with one arm, it's a victory. How do you call it a failure when it is bringing me close to God? How do you call the challenges I'm going through a failure when it is actually bringing me to God? God is interested in you coming to him than you having the car. Let them have the car, but you have eternal life. Let them have the property, but you have an eternal life. Heaven is prepared for you. There is victory even in this defeat. You have not failed. Let them leave you. Let them turn their back on you. But the Lord says, I'm still closer to you. You don't need them. You need God. And God said, I will never leave you. Nor forsake you. You shouldn't kill yourself because you are divorced. God is your husband. And God is your wife. Some of us are in church today because of the trauma we went through. Because of the divorce we are going through. It made us know God. It has brought us to Christ. It is not a defeat. It is a victory. Anything that brings you close to God is a victory. When you live here, I leave you with this. Anything that brings me to God, that brings me close to God, is not a failure. But it is a victory. There is victory even in this defeat. God bless you, church. Amen. Can we be on our feet, please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with your word. We have known, O oh God, that hanging on the cross is not a curse, but it's a victory for us. We have known that anything that tries to break us is actually not breaking us, but it is making us. Thank you for making us know that God, <clears throat> our physical circumstances does not in any way prove your closeness to us or your distance from us. You are not moved by what I drive. You are not moved by where I stay. You are not moved by what I'm going through. But you are still my God. We pray that God, you shall bring your people close to you as never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. We will never give up. We will never commit suicide. In the name of Jesus. Knowing that whatever we are going through will bring the best out of us. Whatever we are going through 
will glorify you whatever we are going through will bring your identity and your revelation we praise your holy name we will not give up we will give you the praise we don't care what we go through because we know you are with us we don't care what we go through we don't care about the divorce we don't care about the pain about the loss of job we know that you are with us Christ in us the hope of glory we bless you we worship you I pray that you shall bless this church. Increase this church in anointing. It let him be removed, oh God. Father, oh God, your word says, Come, all ye that are heavily laden, and I'll give you rest. Give us rest in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I bless you in the name of the Father. I bless you in the name of the Son. I bless you in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, mighty God, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Maybe see. It's a message, a very short message, but did you enjoy? Yeah. It's a powerful message. And I think about that. You know, when I go to the street together with some missionary, I preach the gospel. You know what, Jay, when the gangsters and the homeless and drug addicts, when they beat, they don't beat them, my friend, they only beat me. I said, why me only? I have a wound on my body. Can you imagine? I go together with some of my friends. They don't beat them, but they beat me. I'm the only one. All the times. I'm telling you, I have a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> because I've beaten and I have testimony. But my friends, they don't have testimony. <laughs> <laughs> they only saw, oh, this man only beat him. <laughs> Thank you. Victory in the even in defeat. Yes. We have the victory even in harvest. Amen. You know, great men and women are like they are bully. They are like a feel reject. Like uh, you know, Joseph. When Joseph shared his dream, all his brother jealous. And you know what happened? All his brother tried to kill him. And he they put him in the in the in the in the, in the pit. And he cried. Brothers, brothers, no one here. And finally, it's all of the Judas. Oh, don't, don't do him and sell And then Judas and brothers sold this man Joseph to Egyptian trader. You understand that Joseph, he was bullied by his family, his brothers. But you see, after training, he became a prime minister. Amen. Even David, David. And you message him. He was alone in the field. When the famous prophet Samuel came to Jesus' house, all his seven brothers gone there. And they knew one of us will receive anointing by prophet Samuel will be a king of Israel after the king's soul. They are so exciting, seven of them. But Jesse left the David in the field. David is like a bullying by his father is left left behind in the field. But David is okay while he trusts in the Lord. When, when Samuel tried to give the Lord to Eliab, and God said, don't give to him. Because I saw the heart of a man. But people look at the appearance. But God saw heart. And then God spoke to Samuel. None of, uh, none of your children just uh, uh, to receive the uh, anointing because they are not ready. I don't think that one of them, they are not capable to receive the anointing. Do you have any more child? Jesus says, yeah, I have lost the boy. His name David. He's somewhere in the field. Prophet Samuel said, bring him. Bring him. I'll wait for him. He didn't sit down. When David came, Holy Spirit said, Spirit of God spoke to Prophet Samuel. He is the one. He is the one. Can you imagine when you are look like alone, when you are like left behind, mm. when you are look like rejected by some people? Mm. Okay. You're going to have a great victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're going to have a great victory in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> my good Paul, uh, Pastor Paul, I never seen my, my, my daddy. He doesn't know who is his daddy. Michael. When he was 13, he left his uh, mommy. 
And he said, I don't have any family. Only I, I like the Koreans, he said. <laughs> okay. And then <laughs> even he tried to apply to get a job in Korean company, but they don't accept him. But I tell you, I'm good news. I'm good news for you. If anybody, if anybody reject you and forsake you, but Almighty God accept you. Amen. Amen. Almighty God receive you as a child of God. Amen. 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 Oh, wait for you, brother. Thanks be to God. I do believe, I think, for you and me, you know, we need to give thanks to God in any situation. Why? Because God wants to talk with you. God wants to talk with you. He wants to encourage you in the hard time, in the hardship. He say, come, can you come to me? Can you come to me? He going to ask you to come and come. He wants to bless you. Today, Pastor Abraham and myself, we will pray for you. Anybody of you want to experience big church life in your life, even in that defeat, and then you can come forward and we will pray for you. Let's pray first. Father, we thank you for your word. According to your scripture say, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made the public uh, spectators of them and trampling over them by the cross. Jesus, <coughs> we thank you because you are almost naked, you are ashamed, and you took in all the sins of the world. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, look, the Lamb of God carried the sin of the world, sins of the world. Jesus, we know that you have the great victory. Lord, as you are the children of God, you will have the great victory. Dear Heavenly Father, and the Pastor Abraham and myself will pray for your, your people. Would you bless them today? And they will have the great life, victorious life, even in defeat. Father, we love you. We you bless your name. Every man and woman of in the Bible, their life, terrible life, like the Saul, David, Moses, Abraham, and they used to be in a terrible situation. They used to be in, in, in the in, live in the darkness, but you chose them, you saved them, and made them a mighty man and woman of God. Father God, we are here. Would you touch your children today mm -hmm. by your Holy Spirit? We give the glory and honor and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you keep on praying together. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the Spirit, you can pray Spirit. Let's pray together. Hallelujah.